himself. Are you there? So when Venerable Ike called me to preach, the first thing I did through my personal assistant was to say, we will not minister in the morning, no. And I, even though he has added morning and I yield to it, he has added tomorrow morning. Now, the... <laughs> The idea is this. If the meeting is going to be in the evening, I have all day to pray. Yes. Before 3 o'clock, before 3.30, God will answer me. So I will start the prayer in the night by 10. Because I know it doesn't come quickly. God is a king spirit. You are not with me. He is a king spirit. He's not a servant spirit. You know, they send demons. They say, Oh, boo boo. Go! You cannot send God on errand like that. Because. <laughs> God is a king spirit. And a king spirit will only move when he wants to move. So you will learn how to wait. Yes, in the psychology of seeking God, there is something called wait. Because it's not by power. It's not because you are doing like this. When you finish doing like this for two hours, sit down and wait. <laughs> Some people will come and cry. <laughs> when you finish crying, nothing will happen. Sit down and wait. So if you know the shape of the presence of God at all, you will know that the one that sits in that presence is a king and he will only rise if he wants to rise, when he wants to rise, the way he wants to rise. Now, that's why he, he, he gave us callings. Callings are covenants that will guarantee that he will rise. If not, he has no business. Else. So you were doing your own thing, he called you and said, oh yeah, Separate yourself unto me. I, I have something with you. I have decided to put myself in a position where your faith can influence me because of what I have with you. Do you understand that? It doesn't come quickly. You say, there was never a time I did three days dry fasting that God spoke. Never. So I've stopped doing it. The one I do now. It's like 200 days of eating once in a day. He will come before the 200 days, 264 days, 245 days. They're in the midst. The last one I did, it was 264 that he came. When I did 197, he spoke to me and said, I can see that you are praying. I said, what do you mean by this? I've been here for 100 and... Now, please help me tell your neighbor he's a king. You, you, you. The, when you start, they will create a calendar for you that, okay, it is this day that I will have chance for him. I'm attending to other matters. Let him continue. Let him continue. Most of you will now do seven days dry and leave. You, they, you, are, you don't understand where you are. You don't know where you are. Ah. Uh, you don't know where you are. I began a fasting and prayer. And sincerely, I'm not trying to advertise my spirituality. If that's what you see, I apologize. That's not my intention. Hallelujah. So I began this fasting and prayer. And you know, I was not taught. The elders that knew the truth did not tell us. They did not tell us that before it would take time before Jesus will come to you. No, but you can see angels. Oh no, are you with me? Now, God will give me the grace to practicalize what I'm teaching you this night. So that you will know. I did fasting for like seven months. 
Four angels came into my, my room. I couldn't see them with my physical eyes. But I knew in my spirit that there were beings inside of the room. So I now asked God, I said, if you are responsible for these things that are happening here, let heat, this heat I'm sensing, let it come on my head, which it happened. That was when I was seven, and I was teaching for, um, further mathematics and mathematics and physics. So I calculated the probability of, of it being. <laughs> <laughs> the probability of that touch being from God, I calculated it. It was slim. I said, I'm sorry, this, I'm not sure because even in probability, this one you did now is not proof enough that you are the one that did it. That if it is you, move the thing, put it here. It happened. You know, I was not taught. I made another final request and he it, it, and it did it. So I now said, I'm sorry, it's not as if I'm testing you, but you know, while I was apologizing, that was when I saw the first angel. He opened my spirit and I was able to see the first angel. Now, if that angel comes, I will know. Don't worry. It, the angel... Wait, let's make it come. Um, wait. Uh -uh. You are... Oh, you are... We, we can't proceed. We can't proceed. Now, now, listen, listen, listen. Um, I have preached like this before. I went back to the room. And in prayer, God now said, who were they clapping for? And I couldn't answer. So, you to protect me so that I will protect you. May the Lord give you understanding. Yeah. Now, after seven months, <coughs> an angel, angels began to visit me. I started understanding how they operate. I started understanding how they communicate and how to communicate with them. Or have you studied your Bible? Zachariah was communicating with Gabriel. So it's, you, you can actually communicate with them. And they communicate with you. So instead of me continuing my fasting, because it is God I wanted to encounter, he released angels and I was satisfied. I operated in that angelic dimension for five years before it occurred to me that this was not what I was looking for. I'm still talking about the organic level, the organic dimension. Because it's the Holy Spirit that will give you the power of discernment inside of your spirit to be able to discern the presence of an angelic being. It means the Holy Spirit will introduce you to spiritual beings. I'm still talking about the organic dimension. Most of, oh my God, hallelujah. They, 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 are, they are wonders in the realm of God. Just like they are wonders in the realm of GSM. And you got an Apple phone, Android, um, Samsung Ultra, 2023 you got it because of the new features so that you can explore the GSM network more perfectly so you cast away your Nokia 3310 because Nokia 3310 could not explore it adequately that's why you were looking for a more sophisticated phone are you with me there are technologies that are domiciled in that realm and these technologies are for us to explore. Now, one of the things that you must note in this conference is that God wants to provoke us to explore God the way as astronauts explore space. So when I began to press, angels began to visit me in the room. And I realized that it is the presence of angelic beings. Have you ever been in service before and you forgot time? Has it happened to you before? Okay, or you were praying. Praying and then you forgot. Ah, time has. 
it happens when angels visit. You lose all sense of time. You receive an impartation. An impartation of their own dimension. Time becomes nothing. So you, you didn't feel when time was passing. Because you were plunged into a reality, a depth that was superior to time. Something that existed before time was created. So I came into this experience of angels. And he began to teach me different types. Because there's one that comes and that one comes with fire. There's another one that came that came to activate my prophetic ministry. So that's, are you there? In the book of Revelation chapter 1, you will notice John told us his experience. He says, the revelation of Jesus, which God gave unto him to show his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. The word signified in that scripture in Greek means by sign language. So the book of, are you with me? That book of Revelation was signified to John through spiritual signs. And the spiritual signs came through the vehicle of an angelic personality. If we were only ministers, I would have gone deeper. And I would have told you the things that I've seen in various territories. The things I've seen. I have a gift, the gift of discernment of spirit. I can see the forces in territories. I would have told you a few stories if we were just ministers. So I began to enjoy, enjoy the realm. Education continued. Then after five years, I realized this was not the syllabus. <laughs> May you not be stuck with power. Yeah. There's something more than power. Meanwhile, one of the angels has come. No, don't worry. Just leave me. Don't rejoice. Don't say, Amen. No. So one of them has come. Just so that you will believe me. Because I know you don't believe. So, so that you will believe. That's why I want to do what I want to do. But my lecture has not finished. This angel that has come here. He came with a linen garment. A cloth. A piece of cloth that is like linen shining and glistering <clears throat> and the reason why the angel came with this linen garment is because there is a lady that is in our midst this lady is like 23 years old when you were 13 years old god chose you to be one of the functionaries that will carry his presence from place to place and this presence is what is symbolized by this linen garment. Now, if what I'm saying is true, in the next 23 seconds, anywhere that lady is seated, this angel is going to cover her with the garment in 23 seconds. I'll be counting so that... Now, so what I'm doing now it's because of the education. You see, the same way I picked that the angels are here, there's also a very terrible demon that has come here. So the hand of God will be strong on that lady because today is the day of our commissioning. The linen garment is going to rest upon her. And to rest with intensity. Have you found the girl, oh Usher? There are, there are supposed to be more than one. Oh. Have you found the second one? Is there any Usher on this, on this level? Any Usher on this level? Because look around, you will find another one on that level. Now, can you still stay with me? Just stay with me. 
You are not with me. Stay. So the reason why I did this is because of your own belief, so that you will know that I had such encounters and received education from the Holy Spirit about this realm. Huh? If you know what I'm talking about, uh -huh. if you know what I'm talking about, we can actually stop rain with this, this matter. Yes, we can stop. Maybe we'll have a crusade, something that is legitimate. And then rain wants to come. We can stop it. And it will still rain somewhere here. It will still rain close to the crusade. But it will not rain on the ground. After five years, I realized it was God I was looking for. I was not taught, I was not told that when you are about to have an encounter with God, what he does is that he releases angels to begin to visit you. If you can contain the aura of God that is around the angels, if you can contain it, then you are being prepared to be able to stand before his majesty. I'm talking about the organic side, the living side. There are realities trapped in that side and your recreated human spirit is a vehicle through which you can contact. Because the idea of the rebuilding of the tabernacle of David is setting up a system where we can access God without the protocols of the temple. And that's the arrangement that has been made available to us in the New Testament. But the problem is the average believer doesn't want to explore. So experientially I've discovered that dry fasting doesn't work for me. You do seven days, you do three days. No, I, I've stopped that. In your own spiritual journey, when you start your journey, you will know what works for you. There are people in our midst that if they go on three days dry, they can be raptured into the heavens. You have, that means the same way the Bible says that we need to study our body so that every man needs to study your own body so that you can carry yourself in holiness. That's the same way you are going to be a student of your spiritual life so that you will know what works for you. Because in the school of the spirit, we don't attend classes together. The classes are custom made. They are designed for you according to your calling and according to the texture of grace that you are being modeled to ultimately carry. So in my own calling, I am being shaped to carry divine authority. The kind of authority that will equip me to become a spiritual warrior. So if Satan is doing something in the neighborhood, I'm concerned. Because I'm raised for that kind of job. To fight. To kill. To destroy. That's the shape. So it also justifies the training. It also justifies the, the strategy. Oh, you're not with me. You must find yourself in the spirit. You must find yourself. You are a unique entity in the spirit and you must find yourself. You must find the utensils and the tools that God has ordained that you will carry. That will be an equipment through which you can realize the glory of your calling. Because every calling whether teacher, pastor, evangelist, prophet, has his own glory. And you must find yours. You must find yours. So it took five years. I was laboring in this dimension. 
until it occurred to me that when I began to fast, the reason for which I was fasting was because I wanted to encounter God. So I continued my fast from the moment I realized. Now, meanwhile, it's five years interval, and I still have the angelic. But meanwhile, the angelic dimensions that I was allowed to encounter was preparatory to my ultimate encounter that will give me shape. And I'm telling you, if there's anyone that knows the realm of the spirit here, your encounters can become a reason why you don't walk the journey to the end. Just because you don't discern the purpose for which the encounters come. As as critical as having encounters are in the journey of a Christian. It helps deepen your conviction. It helps deepen your faith. It helps you to become at home with your ideals, even though nobody else believes in your values. Encounters bring that kind of depth. But you see, you must understand the meaning of the encounters you have had so that it doesn't become a barricade that blocks you from the ultimate purpose that God had in mind. I can walk into the congregation now because the second one has come and I can minister in this congregation prophetically for another four hours non-stop. Different things will be happening here. That's the angelic realm. It has opened. I can do that for four hours. All these people here, eh? they will be under their seats. All these, all these people. I can do that. It's the angelic realm. I, I know it. I was trained to understand it. But you see, the reason for the fasting was because I wanted to touch God, to know the mind of God, to know what He wanted, to know what His desire was. Because there's a difference between success and fruitfulness. In success, you are using God to accomplish your own objective. But in fruitfulness, you are allowing God to use you to achieve, achieve his own objective. So you can use the power of God and the anointing of God and prophetic anointing to achieve your own purpose. You can use it to get money, to build a house, to do stuff. What you are doing is that you are successful in the eyes of men, but you are not yet fruitful. The reason for which God gave you the anointing, it has not yet started happening. May we not be carried away and distracted by the very gifts that God has given us. May we not be blinded to God by the things that God has given us, either material or spiritual. In the name of Jesus Christ. So I continued in the fast. So I traveled to one country and when I got into that country, I got in by 2 a.m. in the morning, was ushered into the hotel. By 3.50 a.m. in the morning and Jesus comes into my room. He came with a brightness that was so intense that had the capacity to blind the human eye. So I had to bend and to lie on the floor. And he, he passed my room for 9 to 12 seconds. 9 to 12 seconds. And he told me, the youth, the youth, the youth. He said it four times. He said, use your power of sight to deliver them from destruction. And I will open the gates of nations to you. So I left that country. When I came back, I started hopping from campus to campus, preaching, teaching, manifesting the power of God, preaching, teaching, salvation, Holy Ghost baptism, power. I went, I did this for 12 years and went around Nigeria six times. Because of a nine to 12 seconds encounter, the meaning of my life for 12 years was captured in a moment of nine to 12 seconds encounter with Jesus. It was when I had that encounter that I knew the purpose for which I was given, attached 
those angels for apostolic ministry. Oh, you are not with me. It is, there is a temptation for you to think that the first consignment of anointing that you have is the ultimate anointing. It's a test run. Many people, many people truncate at the first level and they never go beyond it. In fact, some, some become carnal and enter into sin and God withdraws even the anointing. I've seen men, the next time you quote that scripture, the calling of God, the gift of God. I've seen a man that moved in grace and he got into serious immorality. Today he's flat. There is no anointing on his life. But he's still alive. So you, the next time you quote that scripture, just know that you might be quoting it with a wrong understanding. Because I've seen the grace of God, the anointing of God withdrawn from a man and the man is still alive. Not just one man. Many men. I've seen it. That was when I knew this was the purpose for the anointing. And I started going from campus to campus. If you put me on, on the campus now, the level of anointing you will see, <laughs> that's my real platform. I was on it for 12 years. After 12 years, I was preaching somewhere he knew you and he came again he said go and resign I was in the oil industry for 16 years when it was time for me to move into the management cadre, Jesus comes to me and says resign now do you know what it means to be in the management cadre? You, you don't know it means that the government will give you 20 million for house rent every year 20 million that's what it means People can kill for it. Your monthly salary will be 1.8 million. And if by any means you sleep outside of your home because of national service, you are paid in dollars for one night, 24 hours. Oh, you are paid in dollars. And your house rent is 20 million. It will come in January. That was where I was going. The great one came and said, resign. Resign. You know the first time he said, if I'm faithful to the youth, he will open the gates of nations. So he said I should resign because it's time to go to the nations. I cannot go to the nations and do this job. So resign. And the moment I resigned on the 5th of October 2020, the anointing doubled. So for every layer, are you, are you with me? That's what will cause problem. That clap will cause problem between me and you. So I say protect me so that I can protect you. When I minister now, it's, an, it's, it's a platform of trembling. Because I need to go after this meeting and stand before him and say, was it you I served? You don't know this place that I'm talking about. It's a sacred place. It's a slippery place. The bones of many men that didn't know how to order their steps in that corridor are lying by the side of the, of, of the pathway. He said, resign. I want to take you to the nations. Then the grace. And I discovered the second key is called obedience. The more you sacrifice to obey, the grace will increase. The more you sacrifice to obey, the grace increases. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know, I told you one demon came here. You will, you will see it before we close. You will see it. You will see it. You will see it. We do not boast. We know Jesus. We know Jesus. We are called to preach his counsel. And he comes to back up the 
the words that he has put upon our mouth. Hallelujah. So when I began to operate at the second level, I now discover God, if he loves you, he begins to give you instructions. The former three times have I made out your philosophy of all that Jesus began both to do and to preach. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that through the Holy Ghost he had given commandments unto his apostles whom he had chosen. So the proof that you are one of his apostles that he has chosen is that he will give you commandments. He will give you commandments about your financial life. He will give you commandments about your prayer life. One time he came to me and said, if you want to see me from now henceforth, look for me in the night. It doesn't mean it's bad to pray in the daytime, but he gave me a commandment. And my commandment is not a doctrine. It's not something that I impose on people. This is my own personal walk with God. Look for me in the night. So I start in the night. 10 o'clock. When, when sleep is coming, I shake it. Every sacrifice that you pay in order for you to obey gives you access to unlimited resources in the realm of the spirit. So each and every one of us must learn how to practice obedience. Obedience from what you see in the Bible first. Do you pay tight? Do you honor him with your substance? With the first fruit of all your increase? With the basic obedience, you make it a practice. Because the proof that you remember the word of God is that is, is obeying it. Because if you don't obey it, you'll forget it. If you obey it, it becomes part of it, the realities that your heart has handled, your heart has contained. If you are a believer that is determined to perpetually obey God, are you there? You will begin to discover that you will become sensitive to the things that God wants. God can come to you and say, stop watching Champions League. Oh, I know, I know. I know you don't know that I used to be a footballer. I know. Venerable, I know you don't know that. I used to play number 10. I was a midfielder. Yes. I can still play till, till now. It's just that I discovered that the left leg was dead. It's only right. So I knew I won't go far. <laughs> so for me, football was something more than the ordinary. And then he came and visited me one day and said, it's time for you to stop watching football. I died. But when I agreed, he removed football from my heart. Even if, even if I sit before it now, it's boring. But it was something. He knows what can constitute an idol. And the instructions that he will give you is consistent with the likely idols that you can have in your heart. The more you obey him, the more he's at liberty to equip you. It means you are becoming a profitable servant. So he must make more resources available. Number three. You will have to pray much, very much, very much. If you want to keep pace with God, your spirit man must be exercised on a daily basis continually. It must be exercised. I no longer count how many hours I pray in a day. I used to count it when I was much younger in the faith. So I did seven hours. I did 12 hours. I did 18 hours of prayer. But I don't count it anymore because it's a lifestyle now. What I'm looking for is God. 
And if I don't find God, I won't stop. So it's, it doesn't matter how many hours. Those seven hours are dead if I don't find God. You will pray much. You will pray much until the spirit of supplication comes upon you. The spirit of supplication will make prayer easy. It will give you the stamina to be able to stay until God comes. The spirit of intercession, when it is locked upon your spirit, you will forget about yourself. And then you begin, as you pray, you begin to see people in the assembly, in the church. And then you begin to pray for them. It, the spirit of intercession can keep you on your knees for those people that like kneeling down. My best prayer posture is lying on the bed. Find your own. There is no scripture that says all of us must kneel down. In fact, if I kneel down, I will sleep off. So I found out that lying down works for me. Have you found your prayer posture? Just like every preacher has a prayer voice, every music minister has a singing voice. And your prayer voice is that voice that you have when you have you know your preaching voice the one that comes out when you have soaked prayer there is a unique voice that even if you hear it you know ah, i don't gauge i don't gauge that voice there's a voice <laughs> there's a voice like that <laughs> there is a voice every preacher knows what i'm talking about and the day you you have not gauged you'll be looking for that voice is not available i know that voice when i hear that sound Everything that you do is going to be enhanced by prayer. Your Bible study, the revelations that you can access, the things that you can understand in the realm of the spirit as you travel is going to be en enhanced by a life of prayer. The Bible says, and he spake a parable to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. I will pray. I will not faint. I will pray because that is the lifeline that God makes available for a man that has come to the realization of his incapacity, of his infirmity. The lifeline God makes available is the pathway of prayer. That your life will be a result of your capacity to exercise your spirit. Because the things of man will come out of the spirit of man. And no man knows the things of man except the spirit of man that is in him. Your things, your destiny, your capacity, it will come out of your human spirit. For the Bible says that the spirit of man shall sustain his infirmity, but a broken spirit who can bear. So if Satan wants to really attack you, are you there? If he really wants to attack you, what he does is that he wants you to come to a position where your spirit is broken. Because that's the only vehicle that has the capacity to sustain your infirmity. The reason for the marital challenges, anytime you are coming from a crusade and you hit the devil, the devil will jump on your wife and then your wife will deal with you. The reason for... Are you there? The reason for those challenges... Anything that you did that was not the perfect will of God becomes a tool in the hands of the devil. You just married because you found a fine woman. Uh, when you start pressing into God, everything that is not God's perfect will begin to shake. Because Satan wants to find a way to break your spirit. Because he knows that a broken spirit, who can bear? I was discipling a young intercessor and I told her, I say, just go, don't worry. Go, go and grow up. Go, maybe take five years and just be a Christian. After five years, I will come back. She said, no, I want to, I want to be a, a woman of fire. You want fire? Okay. Say, okay, let's go. As she started pressing, I told her the storms will come. They will come so terribly that we shake everything around your life. Are you, are you serious? So, 
So the storm started. I mean strange things. Because the kingdom of darkness knows your potential. It knows what you can become if, if you realize that you have wings with which you can mount up into places in Zion. He knows. He doesn't want you to explore your wings. He doesn't want you to, to go to places, high places in Zion. To learn of secrets that were put in place before creation began. That's why the Bible is full of...